Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick, Girls Season 4, Episode 1, Iowa, they're back, we're back. Alonzo, Anna, Brett, Bree, let's take a look. Think of all your ups and downs, all your hopes and fears, how many of them have been yours and how many have been constructs of romantic discord? Okay, you know what? We're not watching this. Come on, girl. I know I'm not easy. You like totally picked the best one of my friends to bone because I never really liked Marnie. Recently, it's just been me riding while you tinker with your motorcycle. I'm, that's my, that's my mode of transportation, Marnie. Do you wanna go over the plan again? The plan is, there is no plan. The heart wants what the heart wants. You do know who you're quoting, right? You know, Adam, he's really at his best when he's nurturing the poor, the loss, the profoundly damaged. Yes. You know, which is why you were so perfect for him. You and me and Jessa and our slash Marnie, we are going to get through this together. I have no idea what's coming next. Wherever you are, there you go. Is that the quote? Because that was the whole season, apparently. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, this is the trailer, so what we're in for, but a lot of the stuff from this episode was in that. Yes, definitely. Uh, so you know, I, I read uh, my, my colleague at The Wrap, Ingu Kang, wrote a piece saying that she kind of feels like the show is going backwards a little in terms of not allowing these women to mature, to grow up, which is what this, the, how they've been sort of selling this season, and how after the Beach House episode where they seem to get really frank about wh how, where they actually fit into each other's lives and that maybe they're growing past each other, that now they're sort of backpedaling and, and, and trying to sort of recreate that original intimacy. Right, I can see that. That is a difficult, this is a difficult time for a show. For a show to get into like, was it season four mm -hmm. now? They have to, I mean, it, it's just like growing up as a person. This show is doing things that people do, which it seems to be like, you, you, you know you need to progress somehow as a, as a person or as a show, but, but it's, I'm sure it's just scary. Yeah. Because we know how these people work together. We know what works when they're together. But but trying to come up with new plot lines that explore new facets of their personality, we don't want to alienate an audience. I didn't really pick up, though, a lot on, on that this episode. I was so preoccupied with trying to figure out how Iowa is going to fit into the arc of the season. Yeah, that's a really good point. But also, I, I do think that they are taking a lot of season one and putting it back stylistically, like the fourth season opens up with like almost like the recreation of mm -hmm. season one. With the parents, yeah. With the parents, except this time they're really proud of her and they are genuinely really happy for her. And it's nice because you kind of see her like whole plot has just, it's been all over the place and now she's kind of on a path. And it's nice to see her kind of out growing Adam in like a weird way. And then you have Jemima Kirk's character, Jessa, who is actually doing something right almost. So it is interesting because some of them are growing, but then you have Marnie who's just like crying all the time still, which <laughs> makes me laugh no matter what. But. Yeah, the sense I got was that all of the characters are going through some growing pains. Like all of them took some major steps forward in their lives, but they're struggling with the decisions that they've made. So with, um, you know, Marnie making the decision to do her brunch performance. I jazz, mean, jazz, I, jazz, jazz brunch. brunch. Jazz brunch, yes, <laughs> which I didn't know was a thing until I saw that episode. Um, you know, she put herself out there, which she was always very reluctant to do, and then she kind of suffered the consequences of kids yelling and, and playing during her performance, and she kind of took that badly. Um, but what I loved the most was the fact that it was kind of reminiscent of the very first episode in the very first season. I mean, not only do you have the opening scene with the parents, but you also have a jarring sex scene, which you had in the very first episode um, so with Hannah and Adam. What exactly was going on? Was he eating her butthole? Yes, well, apparently well, it's just, it's not, it's not, it's not, a thing. It's not Hannah and Adam, it was... No, uh, no, no. It's, it's Marnie, Marnie and, 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 and Music The man. rocker boy, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, but it reminded me of the very first episode where Hannah and Adam had that really uncomfortable sex scene. Yeah, and to, and to get into, like, the development of the show, I'm not over. I'm not tired of Marnie being Marnie. There's shows that I watch where I'm tired of this dynamic, you know? Yeah. I, I, I am really happy when I see Marnie kind of lose it at the <laughs> jazz brunch and Marnie's not have... Marnie's one of those characters that is so like real life people I know that will never change ever. <laughs> so it is entertaining to watch her just and it, it, be... They've made it entertaining to watch her get taken down over and over and over again because yeah. she keeps 
hoisting herself on her own petard, and so that's where there's nowhere to go but down. You Have know? he met Shosha's parents yet, or is this no, the first no, no, time no, no, finding first out time. that it's first Anna time. Gasteyer and Anthony Edwards. Edwards? What a great <laughs> choice. I haven't thought of Anthony Edwards in a very long time, no. but to see him and have two, these two personalities kind of, it seems like they're 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 always warring with each other, and they're definitely voices warring with themselves in Shosha's mind. Right. I think that worked out really well. Yes. And then to get reminded of Rita Wilson just being like power mom. <laughs> yes. So good. Now, I mean, I, I I mean, yes, rimming is a thing, and I, I we don't see it a lot on television. But it was so weird how it was presented because the the way like they made her her buttocks shimmer, it was sort yeah. of like he was motorboating her, and that's. Usually not how you do that particular act, but what do I know? I, you know, I feel like a lot of the sex scenes in this show are kind of unrealistic, and like they're they're made to be as uncomfortable to watch as possible. Sure. At least that's the sense that I get. But but yeah, I learned something new. Like I knew that people toss salads all the time, but I didn't know that an an analingus. That's a thing. Analingus. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Why not? So that's a word. I, I do think the show goes back and forth a lot between a very realistic depiction of people as we know them and then a hyper-realistic uh, depiction of people. And I think that this the analingus, motorboat in the butthole scene is just, I think it's the heightened reality. I think it was them trying to say that Marnie is gonna do some pervy things, some very weird pervy things that you wouldn't expect her to do. Right, very different from previous seasons. Well, she, the, was, she got kind of freaky with uh, Shosha's ex-boyfriend. Yeah, uh, she got freaky with him. She she got, she, she had got sex with a gay with man. Remember? Yes. Oh, right. The masturbation yeah, scene. Yeah, true. Yeah, so she gets freaky, and I and I like that they're keeping. See, I'm not tired of her being freaky. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's you know uh, I'm trying to think of like she's Coco's in the street, but you know freaky in the sheets. Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> um, yeah, so I I I'm enjoy I enjoyed this first se uh, episode and a Adam's character. We're looking at Adam and. Um, and Hannah's relationship, and them not, the plan is to not have a plan. Yeah. How did we react to seeing her go away, and what do we think is gonna come of, of their relationship going forward? There was a moment of foreshadowing in this episode between Hannah and Adam, and it was when Hannah wanted to say bye, and it seemed as though Adam was asleep, right? Mm. And then as she walked away, he opened his eyes. So he purposely didn't want to say bye to her, and it might be because it's painful for her to go to Iowa for grad school, but it might also kind of be foreshadowing in the way that maybe this is like the beginning of the end of their relationship. See, I read that completely the opposite. Mm -hmm. I read it as her looking at him and saying, am I gonna wake him up to say goodbye and deciding she didn't want that moment mm. and leaving. I, I think I think you're both right. I think yeah. they both yeah. didn't want to have it and they're both in denial about what a long distance relationship is gonna mean for an already somewhat fractious relationship. Yep. You know, And I think this is sort of gonna be the final nail of the coffin, but neither of them, to acknowledge that now would mean to actually have to break up, which neither of them wants to step up and do. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are they going to do? Do you think they're going to just flash forward a series of months until after she gets back? It looks like it, based on this trailer, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. But I think there is going to be some time spent in Iowa. I don't know what the what the chronology of there is going to be, but there is going to be time. That, I mean, but based on the next week on, at least, you know, mm -hmm. um, where, where they introduce the new character, who is the... Uh, I'm blanking on her name, but she's the writer, director, and star of a movie called Appropriate Behavior that is coming out soon, which you should totally check out because it's great. I watch it on HBO Go, so I don't get the previously ons or the oh, coming up on, okay. so I'm I'm left to just kind of. Oh, find see, my I, I always, especially at the beginning of a season, I need me some previously on because yeah. I gotta, you know, yeah. remember what yeah, the, where the hell so we are true. with all this. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, I, it'll be interesting to see. Now that, you know, we, this is, it's funny because, you know, season premieres are all about sort of bringing you up to speed and we're getting an idea, we're getting what Jessa and Shosh are coming out of, but we have no idea what they're going into. So that's, you know, that, uh, you know, and, and part of that might be that, that going to Iowa means a significant jump in time. I don't know how the show is going to play it, but, you know, uh, we're, we're sort of catching them at a moment where there's no sort of announced path for them. Yeah, yeah. which I kind of like, because uh, like that episode where Hannah is with Patrick Wilson's character and the whole episode is just their oh, right, story, right. which I actually kind of liked. A lot of people didn't like that, but it, it is kind of nice to escape with just one character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially Hannah, who's so, I mean, just her actions are so, you really never know what she's gonna do ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Shoshana, you're like, oh, we kind of know what she's always gonna <laughs> do, but Hannah is like, you never know. It's Unpredictable. Cool. Yeah. Well, was, it, was it Charlie Day who did the whole thing about like gaining weight to go back to 
It was it's Mac, always so Okay, McElhenney yeah. Did so it. the idea that the people on TV shows lose weight the longer the show's on, so that so he aggressively got fatter over the summer just to like screw like with that. Noticeably, enormously. Yeah, fatter. like really put great. on weight. I love that Lena Dunham gives not one fuck about yeah. losing weight. If anything, is maybe even a little heavier than last season. Doesn't care. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did like the parallel like uh, pod of friends at the jazz brunch. Um, <laughs> I like the you know like the same yes. thing where like I'm sure if. I forget, you know, I forget the name of the guy. You, you oh, know, right. If, you know, they're, they're all very, like, you know, catty and <laughs> will attack a group, someone outside of their own group. And just to have, I like when television shows have essentially the equivalent group <laughs> looking in at the group we've come to love. And then you realize that if I just ran into this group of people they on the street, I'd be like, you all are terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's the brunch gangs of New York. <laughs> that's, that's the thing that I love about the show, though, because you go from like loving characters to hating characters, and I have I have that relationship with Marnie, where sometimes I'm like, oh my god, you're so freaking unbearable, get your shit together. And she had that wonderful moment with Elijah, where he's like, stop being a little bitch, okay, you need to stop crying Gross because fine. your jazz brunch didn't go the way you wanted it to. And then I have these moments where I love her, when, you know, she was the only one who went to say bye to Lena, yeah. um, Lena's character, Hannah. Um, before she went to Iowa for grad school. So I, I, it, I love that. I love how complex the characters are. And Elijah is great. I'm glad that he's going to be in the season yeah. a lot more. No, I was, I was, somebody was asking me if they should be watching the show, and I said, no, it's a great show about the most exasperating characters. Yeah, that's true. And that's true. what I like about it. Like, it, it's not afraid to make them unlikable, you know, cyclically, you know, right. uh, and, and, and to b let them be sort of aggressively human and irritating yeah. and all that stuff. That is so hard to do. Yeah. Because what you have is, you know, real people go on swings. And, and the thing about television shows is I most, I traditionally, historically, people watch television shows to have like steady characters they keep coming back to yeah. that are, you know, are their friends. This is just like real friends. <laughs> Speaking of those types of characters that are kind of grating, I suppose, I was waiting for Adam's sister, Gabby Hoffman, to come mm. into this episode, and I was so bummed out yeah. that she was not in it, because oh, every time she's on screen, I just, mm, I love it. Um, we'll see her, apparently. <laughs> so she's coming back. I was so, so excited in that <laughs> teaser just now. Oh, yeah. yes. And they just won the Golden Globe for Best, best Comedy Series, Transparent. Yes. Mm -hmm. she's, on, she's in Transparent. Right, if you guys right, haven't right. seen that, you should definitely check it out. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, girls is back, and uh, we will be we will be checking in every every week this season. So uh, come back and check us out.